Hello, welcome to the show and great to see you again, Craig. <laughs> nice to see you as well. I appreciate you guys having me and um, hopefully I can provide a lot of value to uh, the listeners today. Oh, absolutely. Let me give you uh, give our listeners a short introduction before uh, we go uh, deeper into our topic today. Sure. So uh, Dr. G is the catalyst of self-growth. He's also one of the most down-to-earth people that I've heard the privilege to work with. He's also the CEO of PC Medical System, author, motivational speaker, and devoted be uh, belief system expert. He's the owner of PC Medical Group. In May 2008, uh, his life took an unexpected turn. As a result, his health, relationships, career, finances, and fate declined. Dr. Craig didn't recognize or even like himself when looking in the mirror. He felt as if he had no choice but to focus on his family. The problem is, if he wa was not taking care of himself, he would not be able to take care of his family. This is when Fix Your BS was created. Dr. Craig took everything he knew and had learned in his life and applied it in, it in this program, his book, Fix Your BS, so Belief System is scheduled to release uh, soon. Uh, when is it uh, released? If we start with that. Yeah, actually, it just got released um, just in, in between, yeah, like a couple of weeks ago. So it's um, here it is. <laughs> it's it's in the physical form. Look at that. Oh, you can't really see it. Look at that. Woo! Fix your BS. That's right. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Um, I like the BS belief system. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it's um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Oh, it's it just it was um one of those things that I I just I believe that if you learn something in life and you keep it to yourself, that's just an extremely selfish thing. There's somebody somewhere that that information can help, and that's the purpose of me taking the time to write it down. Um, is just to help other people, you know, figure their own self out and their own uh, create the life that they want, create the life that they love. Absolutely. This is what we talked about yesterday as well. Like some of our speakers saying like you have so much knowledge and there is someone out there who needs it. Mm -hmm. So we just need to quiet down that voice. What is saying like, you know, maybe like, oh, who would read my book or who would need my program and like go out there. So congratulations on your book. Well, thank you. And <laughs> before I want to hear more about the the breakdown that you had we ask our experts what does courage mean to you and how does it show up in your life well courage is simply just um being afraid but yet taking action in any way that is courage i mean that's what it is it's uh you mentioned um you know people saying oh I, I, what if nobody reads my book what if nobody likes my book what if nobody likes my program or reads my program or whatever it doesn't matter. Um, I view take the viewpoint of if it's coming from inside of you, there's there's this spark that's coming from inside of you. It's meant to get out to the world. And so I do something called writing for the wastebasket. If no one reads the book, it doesn't matter. It still was something that was burning inside of me that needed to get out. So that was the purpose. And then the back end, if it happens to help someone. Um, so I'm setting myself up for success because the purpose isn't to sell a million books or to get people to like the book. That's not the purpose. The purpose is there was something inside of me that needed to be out to get out into the world to help other people. And uh, it, it it's become a reality. And because it's become a reality, it's already success in, in my mind. So. What have you learned uh, in this process of writing the book? Hmm. I learned a lot. There's a lot of introspection that had to occur for this to, to happen. Um, when we're talking about belief systems, you're really talking about the belief of who you are as a person and what you're capable of. And um, you have to confront yourself quite often uh, in that process. And so over a five-year period, I did that a lot and was able to say, you know, there's a, there's a pretty simple system that happens. It's five steps. It's just a five-step process. And if you keep repeating these five steps, 
and you keep uh, putting those into uh, the creating the life you want in the five pillars of life, which I deem as relationships and your career or business, same thing, um, finances, your health and your faith. If you have all five of those pillars really strong, then you're really happy with your life and you're really excited about the day to day. Um, most people, though, they keep running into um, life. <laughs> life just happens and they keep running into it and they don't want to they, they end up settling. They just say, well, I guess this is good enough or it's not meant to be. Um, but it's all about the belief about what the, those challenges are and what they actually mean um, will dictate the outcome and the end result. Oh, yes. Like Anna was sharing our a previous uh, speaker that how to step from that reactive to mm -hmm. creative mode. Like yeah. if you're just thinking, oh, this just happens to me. Why am I always in this situation? It's like maybe the time to take that pause and look in the mirror. Like, what do you want to create? And look at those five five pillars of your life. Um, I, I would like to ask from you, since in the introduction, we heard that, you know, your life wasn't going maybe as planned and you had uh, a lot of challenges in all of those areas. If yeah. you can share more about your, if I may call it a breakdown moment <laughs> and what made you to create your breakthrough after that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go all the way back to the beginning. Um, when my wife and I have two kids, um, our first child um, was a, a girl. She was um, redhead and just, you know, just this uh, amazing, you know, gift. And then two and a half years later, we had our son um, and also amazing gift. And I was sitting in, in the hospital room holding him and my wife was there and my family was there and we were talking about the future. And, you know, we had a two and a half year old daughter and we have the son and here's where it's going to, we had a business and we're going to have the proverbial American dream, you know, the business, the white picket fence, the family, the boy, the girl. When um, suddenly out of nowhere, the, the medical doctor comes in and says, hey, we need to talk to the parents. So all the other uh, family members need to leave. And that was odd. So um, the medical doctor proceeded to tell us that, you know, our son was born with dwarfism and had a lot of uh, some medical complications and some things. And so it took the, the direction we thought we were headed in life and it totally turned it a new direction. Um, Dwarfism is something that occurs in one in about 50,000 births. It's totally random. 80% um, of, of children born with dwarfism have no family history at all, which was, we were in that category. And so we had to, we had to go, well, we were expecting to go here and now we're going there. So what does that mean? And how is that, you know, how does that work? And so there was a lot of questions that, that came about. Um, he ended up having a lot of medical complications and he ended up with a trach and event that helped him breathe. So uh, you can imagine our family was under quite a bit of stress <laughs> for a while, mm -hmm. for eight years. Um, so we had, you know, pretty much every stress you can imagine, financial, relationship, um, you know, chemical, mental, emotional, all of it. We just, we were stressed. And uh, toward the end of that, when he started to get better, we had to reassess where we were and what we were capable of in life and where we wanted to head. And that's where the process came. It was, hey, I'm in my mid thirties. We focused on keeping our family together. We focused on keeping him alive. Those things are still here. So now that it's not how do we survive the day, it's how do we build the life we want? And that's when everything started to shift in, in the end of 2018. Um, five years later, we've got an amazing life that we love. And we uh, have learned a lot through that process. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at now. And that's why you invited me on because it is a very unique story that, um, that still is very relatable because everybody has a moment where something unexpected happens, whether it's, you know, there's just, there's just, everybody's thinking of their own and I could go through hundreds of examples, but I won't because it'll take, take forever. But, um, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so our listeners, if you can think think that moment that what it, what has been in your life, and I thank you for sharing this with us because, like you said, there's unexpected things. Life throws challenges to us that we can't control, and how we can be flexible in that, like you described, mm -hmm. like you had this vision, 
but then this happened like then it's like okay how do I reassess and how do we adapt and be flexible and then when you go back into well not maybe back but but when you're you know uh on the other side of the bridge and and your mm -hmm. your children are healthy and 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 well like then oh taking the time like what do we want to create now and focus on yeah and can it, you tell us always, a little bit more about that like yeah, how do the, you create that vision there's not always a happy ending necessarily because there's a lot of a lot of people that are dealing with a lot of traumatic things that happen in their life and you have to and this is where the belief system comes in, because if you believe that things are happening to you and you are the effect of those things, then you have a very negative or, you know, uh, it, negative meaning. It's just it's very hard to find a positive in that mindset, in that belief of why does this always happen to me? Um, it's very hard to have a positive outcome from that. You you have to look at it and go, what can I learn from this? What am I supposed to be learning from this? If you look at life as an experience, and when you experience things, you you pay attention to, is this a emotion that I enjoy or that I don't enjoy? Or is this a situation that I enjoy? Or am I supposed to be learning something from this situation? It's it's being curious like a child and asking question after question about things internally. So then you can understand the situation or the emotion better. And if you really get good at that habit, then it becomes who you are. And when it's who you are, you are constantly in search for things that you can learn from your experience. And when that happens, <laughs> you learn a lot quicker and you absorb a lot of other things, um, a lot of things. And so um, you end up understanding how you can create the life that you want. And you understand that, like Dr. Anna was sharing, there's this moment in between an event and an emotion or a reaction. And that moment is what I'm really referring to. It's the question moment. It's It's to go, what does this mean? Why do I feel this way? How is this actually affecting me? Um, now, you're never going to have 100% control over, over the emotional side. However, if you understand that your emotions are there to learn something from, then guess what? You, you have a different outcome than if you have the idea that, well, this always happens to me and I was born under the wrong bridge and I must have had some sort of unlucky star or I broke a mirror or your whatever belief you've developed. Because the reality is, Life is an experience and you have the choice. You really have the choice of how that experience goes. Mm. You were so many years under that stress that you described. What helped you in that moment? You're still here. You said you're now living the dream life. You have amazing family and businesses. So what helped you in those stressful, maybe darkest moments? Mm. Well, so there, there's the idea that I'm never, I'm never going to give up. Um, you know, that when I talked about earlier settling, well, I guess this just is the way it is. There was always this, this spark inside of me that said, there's good that's coming out of this. I just have to find it. I have to just search for it. There's, there's, there's lessons. There's something that I need to learn from this. And and maybe I'm focusing on something that I don't necessarily, uh, that is uncomfortable or I don't want to uh, participate in, but I know that it's better for the end result or the greater good or the outcome. So that therefore I'm going to dive in and be the best I can be in that moment, even though it may be uncomfortable or something I don't necessarily want to do, but it's a necessary thing. Like, you know, me focusing on keeping my child well, uh, you know, that doesn't really relate to oh, your financial goals or your career goals or your life goals or any of that. And I have to take that and put it aside and say, we'll get to that when it's when it's time. So how I got through it was just the mindset of who I am as a person is someone that never gives up. I feel like that is the only failure is stopping, is giving up, is saying, up, oh, I quit. That's the only failure. Everything else is just learning experiences. And so that's that's that was the mentality that I have and I still have. Yes, when we look at kids learning how to walk, like my nephew is like, right. there's a lot of balls and they just get up again. So I like what you said, you know, just 
failure is just giving up. It's not failing if you're falling, mm. if you just keep keep getting up. Uh, there's something I would like to share with our listeners because when we met the first time and I heard the wo- word co-creating a vision mm. with with your your wife, and this is a moment where my my relationship with my husband almost broke down because we weren't mm. co-creating we had a vision but it wasn't very clear we weren't uh, specific with the timelines we had our own perceptions of the vision mm-hmm. and he wasn't waiting for me anymore he was like yeah I'm not waiting here in London for you to move in because it looks like that you're not committed Mm-hmm. So I would like to hear your take on the the co-creating your life and uh, w- with your family because, like you sure. said, there was moments when you really wanted to focus on parenting and taking care of your child, and you put some other things on hold. So how mm-hmm. can you harmonize all those five areas and together with the people you care about? Yeah, it's two things. It's really two things. It's number one, being very clear about what you want about the end result that you're looking for. And number two, communication, communicating that result. Um, people get really stressed when you're vague, when, when there's not a clear end result. That's literally, I, I always bring it down to um, imagine you and your wife or you and your spouse were going to go on a vacation, but you didn't talk about where either of you wanted to go and you didn't set a specific destination and you just said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna go on vacation. And then you each developed your own idea of where that vacation was and when it was going to happen and how long it was going to be and the money that you were going to spend on it. And then when that day came, because you probably picked different days and you probably picked different destinations and you probably picked a different amount of money to spend. So when that day comes, um, you know, let's say the uh, the, myself in the relationship, I had said, well, we're going to leave on this date and come back on this date. And that day comes and she had picked a totally different date. Well, then I just go ahead and go on my vacation. And then she's like, well, where are you going? I'm like, on vacation. We talked about going on vacation. Why aren't you coming <laughs> with me? Well, don't you think that, yeah, it, it's such a simple example, but it's so yeah, true. Yeah. So many, this is, this is how people, so the yeah. same thing in, in your life, <laughs> right? The same thing. My wife has a really great saying, and it, it's, it's, um, if you're not on the same page, show them your page which is just saying, Mm. here it is. Now, here's why people don't do that. They're afraid of two things. They're afraid of their own desires or they're afraid that their desires will be rejected by the other person. Mm. That's what they're afraid of. So if you don't communicate it, it's because of one of those two or both of those fears. Um, And if you define what you actually want, you say, you know, here's the life I actually want. I have my own desires. I want to create those. I want to create this amazing, fantastic, like belief of what, or I have this belief of what I'm capable of. And I want to move toward that. Well, if I never communicate any of that to my significant other, how are they supposed to know? Like, I'm just, am I just supposed to assume that they know? And so if you, number one, I have to communicate that number one. If I don't communicate that, there's very low possibilities that it's going to be like, oh, everything just worked out great. But if you're not communicating it, it's because you're afraid that they're going to reject your vision of the future or provide resistance for that. And you can't be afraid of that. If they're going to be with you, you're either going to fight it now or you're going to fight it later, one of the two. And the idea of, of having a relationship is, is saying, hey, we're going to work together toward reaching our goals, and I'm going to support you and who you are and what you want to do, and, and I expect the same, and I just need to share with you what those are. Now, that being said, there are many relationships that are not really good at communicating, and so they have to get good at communicating. In the first chapter of my book, literally the first, second page, I think. I talk about a technique called the double V technique. The double V technique is simply put any, it's a communication um, technique where if you're talking about anything, it could be an argument or it could be, you know, your dreams for the future. Here's the way it would work. Let's say we want to talk about our dreams for the future. I'm going to tell you what I am envisioning for our future. And all you have to do, you're going to write it down, but you cannot say anything back to me or give me any rebuttal at all until I'm done. 
And then you're going to repeat back to me what I said or what you heard that I said. And we're going to go back and forth and doing that until I agree that you have heard what I said. Then you are going to give me your perspective of your version or your vision. And we're going to do that same process. I'm not able to say anything back while you're talking. That's the hardest part for people. And then we're going to do that until you have been heard. And then we are going to take those two visions and we are going to combine them and go, here's my expectation. I expect you to support me and blah, 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 blah. So you set the expectation and you communicate. And then once you have that, it's it's so funny. People are like, well, I thought you would be mad that I wanted to really succeed in this. And they're like, I want you to succeed in that. But they had this belief that they probably didn't want to support them. And it's a, it is a bunch of BS. It really is. It just, yeah. all this stuff in between our head, we make a bunch of stuff up. So all I'm saying is the way we did it was I came clean with, I have these big dreams and these big visions, and I really just need your support. And I want you to come along for the ride. Because I said that she was like, I thought you wanted to do these things without me. And I was holding you back but you want me to come along for the ride? I'm like, yeah, I want you to come. She's like, well, I want to come along for the ride. Oh, now we can both work together to to get the end result. And that's what really happened. I know it was a long story, but um, it becomes that simple. If if you're both committed to the relationship, it's really just Mm -hmm. communicating the expectations and not being like, I need you to do this for me. It's like, here's my expectations for the future of what we have. And then actually communicating that which communication is not me telling you. It is, I talk, you hear what I'm saying, and then you talk and I hear what you're saying. It is this back and forth exchange. And so um, I hope people get something out of that and can work on that. Oh, that's great. I'm going to do that exercise with my husband because we have a big plans and visions and mm-hmm. we get to be on the same page or what you said, show my page and he's going to show his. Right. <laughs> so this is a very useful exercise. I love that you address the communication because in my coaching trainings and everywhere, really, the conflicts that we have is usually about the communication how we tell things and people really just want to be heard so how this exercise is good for any situation you know just Mm -hmm. to tell and then because we hear what we maybe want to hear there might be some filters you know and so then to repeat that so great great Mm -hmm. great exercise to give oh I'm just like remembering a lot of moments from my life when you share so thank you yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome emotional and, and here. you have to under, I mean most people don't realize this but there's there's only two things that are keeping you from the life that you want okay there's only two and people are like oh it can't be that simple it is that simple most things in life are literally are simple they're just not easy and they're not easy because people are not willing to change who they are or change their actions in order to create the life they want to create you know if you want something in life, in any area, there's things that you have to give up. That's just like, if I want more money, I need to give up time in order to learn how to make more money. I have to give something up in order or, you know, in order to have that happen. Anyway, there's only two things. Number one, if you have any area of stress or resistance in your life, it is because you have the wrong information. So number one, you have to have new information. And it, it is that simple. I want to build a business. Great. You probably don't know how to build a business. You need to get the information of how to build a business. It has been done. It is being done currently. There's a system that needs, you know, that you should learn. And there's people that are just like you or similar to you that have built that business, finances, relationships, career, health, faith, all of it. Doesn't matter. New information. Number two, you take that information, you put it into action, you develop new habits. So new information and new habits Mm. generate the life you want. It is literally that simple. I cannot tell you how easy, how simple it is. It's just not easy because once you get the new information, you are going to have to change and grow into the person you need to become in order to have the life that you want to have. And that's where the rub is for people. They live in what I call purgatory. I'm here, but I want to be here. And I stay right here in the middle, bouncing back and forth. 
And they're just oh, I'm so discontent. You're discontent because you have not made the 100% belief of I am this other person. And therefore, the standards and information and habits that I had in the beginning will not work now. Now I have to have a new set of information, a new set of habits and standards. And therefore, I create the new life that I want to create. But there's that resistance. Got to give something up in order to get anything. Yeah. We just want the results. We want to be there right now. Ah. <laughs> there is some gratification or something like how you can break that down. Mm -hmm. And like you said, okay, I need this information here. Then you then you grow and you learn like, so what is the next set of information that will take yeah. you the, the next the, step? The biggest mistake so, I made in my life was being in a hurry. Yeah. In a, it, being in a hurry. Mm. I want it. I want it now. That is not, it never Pause works like that. It never <laughs> works like that ever. It is repetition mm -hmm. of the right or correct actions that will lead to whatever you end result you you desire. And so let me give your, your audience, because I know we're running short of time, but just let me yes. give them three steps. Okay. Three steps. Yeah. These are the three. Now I've, I've done, you know, there's only two information, information and habits, but three steps. Number one, create a clear and concise vision of what you want. I mean, to the, to the point where you can visualize it, okay? And you can do that in each pillar. If you want to know which pillar to focus on, there's a, there's a quiz that we've created. It's a really simple 60-second quiz. If you want to know which pillar you need to focus on, go to fixyourbs slash quiz, okay? Um, because you can't do them all at one time. It takes time yes. and it takes repetition. So number one create a clear and concise vision of what you want. And I mean, you can emotionalize it. Number two, you are going to take consistent and correct action toward that vision every single day. Consistent and correct. Now, how do you know if it's correct? You learn from other people. That's where the information comes in. Okay. Number three, this is the one where people mess up. And this is where I messed up for years. So I feel your pain. Number three, eliminate all control or um, expectation of when and how that vision will come true. Mm -hmm. All you have to do, keep the vision, the clear, concise vision in your mind, take consistent and correct action every single day toward that and eliminate uh, the expectation of when and how it will happen, which is called faith, have faith that will occur. Then guess what? It will occur, but you have to keep that belief. You have to keep that faith and you have to repeat one and two over and over and over every single day. And then guess what? It will occur. And you'll go, huh, it's here. I became the person I needed to become to have the life I wanted to have. And voila, you have the life that you want. So. Yes, there's the gift link. You can go and do the quiz. Thanks for sharing this. Because like you said, the, the expectation when it will happen and when life throws balls and you were like, okay, 10 years you took to focus on other things and you had these other passions, but it wasn't like giving up on them. Like they were there. They were there in your mind. It was just a little bit on pause and change of plans. <laughs> <laughs> so I want people to take that, the, the compassion and patience uh, and really going through Three steps, we have them in the chat so everyone can, can take notes. Thank you so much, Dr. Greg, Dr. G, mm -hmm. uh, for joining us and congratulations again on your newly launched book. So uh, Thank you. we can go and fix our BS. <laughs> That's right. And uh, yes, there it is, fix your BS. And um, our listeners, there was so many tools. So I do advise you all to go and watch the replay as, as well. So thank you again. Appreciate you guys. Thank Greg. you. Have a great day.